this epidemic of chronic diseases that we're now seeing, more than 50% of Americans are suffering from a chronic disease. And that's just people who are in the average age ranges. You look at people that are over the age of 65, it's not unusual to have two, three, four, or even more chronic diseases. And all the things that we do in medicine today haven't solved that problem, whether it be mainstream medicine or it be complementary and alternative medicine. We need support. We need some new studies. We need some therapies that focus more on lifestyle and, and wellness and prevention than we do aggressive treatments. Yet there are still some treatments that are possible to use that have not been well studied, unfortunately, but are still appealing to a lot of people, including doctors as well as, as patients themselves, because we need to have some kind of solution or some kind of hope that we can do something that can help some of the chronic diseases we have. One of those cases is a drug called naltrexone. It's been approved by the FDA and it's been around long enough that it's off patent, but it's still something that is, is being used for things other than for what it was originally prescribed or approved by the FDA. Naltrexone originally was to be used for people who had acute uh, addiction problems, uh, maybe withdrawal symptoms from narcotics, and it was a way to get them off. And it's also something that can be used over the long term for people who are alcoholics or people who have drug addiction problems where there's not acute toxicity, but we're just trying to do something to reduce people's addiction to those uh, substances. Now, some interesting things have developed. We know that you can use something called low-dose naltrexone, which means using about one-tenth or less of the normal dose that's used in the addictive situation. And it, it's been purported to affect an awful lot of illnesses that we've been trying to do something about that in the mainstream we've had poor luck. So things like cancer and Crohn's disease and multiple sclerosis, HIV, a lot of the autoimmune diseases, autism, lots of anecdotal evidence that maybe low-dose naltrexone does something that changes the course of, this, of these illnesses so that people can get symptomatic relief and sometimes long-term cures. Now, there's a kind of academic arrogance that we have in the mainstream of medicine because we say, well, if it hasn't been studied in the mainstream and we don't have published research in major journals, we're simply not going to look at it. And yet the prognosis in these illnesses is drastic. We're seeing deaths and lots of disability and people are suffering. And when you have a drug like low-dose naltrexone that's approved by the FDA that has an amazing safety profile, why wouldn't you consider doing that, particularly as a last-ditch effort? when you know that you can't solve the problem using the mainstream therapies and you're not going to be suffering from a lot of side effects. That's one of the things that doctors on the cutting edge and in complementary and alternative medicine therapies tend to focus on. And I can understand that there's a, a gap between what's well known in the mainstream literature and what's not well known and there's a security place where we doctors tend to just want to focus on what we're safe using and don't want to get into problems either with their patients because we're doing things that haven't been approved specifically for the uses they were indicated or could turn out to have some problems. So this is a situation, this low-dose naltrexone, that I think is something that we should be considering in certain situations. Of course it's important. We need to do something to make sure that our patients understand that these aren't proven therapies. We also need to be clear with them about the downside of this, which is relatively minimal. Unless, of course, we're taking it away from a mainstream treatment that we think has a good chance of working. So we have a treatment here that's interesting. And what's really interesting is that low-dose uh, naltrexone affects opiate receptors, and it, and it really does a lot to uh, provide a, a place where this drug can have an action that does some surprising things. For example, one of the things that it does is it can do a lot to slow down the growth of ovarian cancer cells. This is done in a test tube, and of course that's not the same as a person, but this research came out of the University of, of Pennsylvania Medical Center in, the, in July of 2007, and is pretty encouraging that it might be something to try in clinical trials. They went further and did something where they transplant ovarian cancer cells into mice, and then these mice develop ovarian cancer, and in this setting too, it was shown that low-dose naltrexone did something to change the rate at which the cancer was growing and it slowed it down. So I think that we need to look at some of the, uh, some of the complementary alternative therapies a little more seriously. And low-dose naltrexone is one. 
particularly if it's used with a combination of mainstream chemotherapy in people who have ovarian cancer now that this data is available. The real answer, we need to do something at the, at the higher level. The National Institutes of Health should be taking responsibility to do research on studies uh, using low-dose naltrexone and therapies like it because you're never going to find the big pharmaceutical companies wanting to study these, these particular substances because they're off patent. They can't make that, that much money off of it. And of course, that means there's less interest. But the National Institutes of Health is the people's uh, National Institutes of Health. We pay for that. And the research that's done from that uh, through the National Institutes of, of Health should be geared towards doing that kind of research that's not going to be funded by big pharma, the technology industry, or people who have a lot of money and special interests. So when we look at things like low-dose naltrexone, it's one more tool in our bag, our armamentarium, of treatments that's safe, that is used as an off-label use, that might be something to consider if you have a chronic illness and you don't have another approach that might solve it.